Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the videos. Okay. Consider the following statements. Inflation benefits the debtor. These kinds of questions are the more easiest one. Consider that. Mm. So you are the creditor. And there is a debtor. So it's you and your friend. So friend is asking for a money of thousand rupees. And he is saying that within one month I will return you. One month is the maturity time and uh, while I am returning it, I will give you the interest rate of 10 percentage of 100 rupees. Okay. So after one month what you are going to get is 1100 rupees. So this is the thing. Okay. But what, what your friend is actually doing is with that 1000 rupees, he is going to buy a airport. Okay, consider that actually the market is in the inflation. So with this thousand rupees, he is buying this airport. Okay, so he is returning you the money after one month as thousand hundred rupees. Now what you are planning is you are going to buy this airport. Okay, you are planning it. Okay, but at the time the airport prices consider that thousand three hundred rupees. Due to the inflation in the market, the price of the airport is going to increase or it's increased. Okay. So now even though you are having 1100 rupees, you need extra 200 rupees to buy this airport. Okay. So in this scenario, okay. So if the market is in the inflation at that scenario, who is actually the benefiter is this debtor, your friend is the only benefitor, okay, because he bought that airport before the one month, before the inflation going to hit that, hit that product, okay, but what is the thing is happening is after one month you are going to buy the product, but the prices of the product is increased due to the inflation. So if there is inflation in the market, the benefitor will be the debtor it's not a creditor okay so the benefit the, the beneficial person here is only your friend it's not you okay so the answer is inflation benefits the debtor it is true next the inflation benefit the bond holder see the concern with this statement is it's more blank it's a plain one it is not speaking about anything like inflation indexed bond so what is this inflation indexed bond means consider that you are buying a bond okay for 100 rupees and it is saying that the interest rate will be one percentage and the maturity time of around one year so what you are thinking is after one year you will going to get 101 rupees but the market inflation rate is 4 percentage means now you are what is this, this negative is you are going to lose 3 percentage ok so let it be more clear 100 rupees is the bond rate and the, uh, and the interest rate is 1 percentage for 1 year maturity period here the inflation rate in the market is actually 4 percentage which means now the product is 100 rupees means after 1 year the product the price is going to 104 rupees okay so that is what this inflation rate is means after one year what you are going to get is 101 rupees only which means you are going to losing 3 rupees okay so this is called as a normal bond market when it comes to the inflation indexed bond means if there is an inflation of 4 percentage means what they will do is they will just add this 4 percentage to this bond interest rate. So what they will do is 105 rupees. Okay. So this is the this is the inflation indexed bond. Okay. After one year you will get 105 rupees as the returns for that bond. 
if it is the inflation indexed bond because 4 percentage is the inflation rate in the market and 1 percentage is the your interest rate okay so by calculating that they will provide the returns of 105 as your return okay if it is the inflation indexed bond means you will get that benefit but here the statement is the inflation benefits the bond holder means it's a one of the plain one okay it is not explaining anything specifically okay so if it is not a inflation indexed bond means it is not going to benefit anyone so inflation benefits the bond holder means it's a wrong one so the answer for this question is actually a one only okay thank you <laughs>